Um, I'm Dennis Montagna. I work with the National Park Service in the Northeast Region Office, and I manage the Monument Research and Preservation Program that we have based on that office. In that office, we provide assistance in care of outdoor sculpture, care of monuments, care of cemeteries. We, we provide assistance to a, a, a broad uh, constituency of uh, other government agencies, local, state, state and local governments. Um, the project that we've been working on recently uh, came about because of a vandalism incident. In, in Philadelphia that was discovered in late late February. Uh, Mount Carmel Jewish Cemetery was, was vandalized and we uh, provided assistance in, um, in, a, in a preservation planning or really a disaster response to, to that. So we've been working in Philadelphia um, with local masons as well as with a cemetery preservation conservator uh, who's based out of New York to put a program together to try to undo a lot of the damage that, that's been done. Uh, to, to date, we've re, um, reset probably 200 or 250 monuments, uh, and the project is an ongoing project in, in, in Philadelphia. In doing so, we realized that this is a cemetery that not only suffered from a particular incident of vandalism recently, but also has suffered, as many cemeteries have, uh, a long-term neglect, a long-term lack of, of maintenance. So a number of monuments uh, had been down on the ground, not because of this recent vandalism, but, but over a period of years. A number of other monuments were at risk of being toppled. So we've really been trying to deal with the cemetery in a, in a, in a holistic way. Actually, people can find out more about the Philadelphia Project by contacting the uh, Jewish Federation of Greater Philadelphia. Uh, the Federation has been receiving donations, uh, and it's those donation monies that have been used uh, to help carry out the work that's going on now. Uh, we've, we've gone through a couple of phases. There will be additional phases. There'll, there'll be, there'll be uh, a, a new fence going in, uh, probably some, some, some lighting as well. So it's really an attempt to, to deal with the whole landscape and, uh, you know, deal with more than, than just repairing broken stones. Back at the end of, of, uh, of February, it was reported that there had been um, uh, about 100 monuments at Mount Carmel, which is a Jewish cemetery in Philadelphia. It was reported shortly after the, uh, the vandalism out in St. St. Louis was, was reported. Um, this probably occurred about the same time, even though it's, they said, the news said that there were about 100 stones, we think there are more likely 200 plus. Uh, that, that, that were, were, this is the first we heard of it was seeing it on, on the news. Um, this is in general what the site lo looked like, and I'll show you a map that indicates. So they, anyway, this was what was initially found. Uh, Monuments toppled over, pushed. They were, you know, good-sized monuments, most, mostly granite, some marble, mostly granite um, stone on a, on a stone base. Uh, so, like, the first thing that happens is, you know, police come out and the police do their police thing, you know. So we, we've got, they're, they're dusting for prints and they're bagging things and, you know, all that kind of stuff. They've found there's been no indication of who actually carried this out. We, we know nothing about that. Um, community response, families immediately came who have loved ones buried there. Uh, to see whether or not their, you know, stones from their family members had, had been toppled. Uh, and, you know, the initial response really was for people to go try to rectify things. We had people trying to muscle these stones back into place, four and five guys are lifting and setting. And fortunately, the cemetery stepped in right away and said, don't, don't do this because, you know, you're, that's not helping. All you're doing is creating an unstable monument because it's just stones sitting upon stones. So they actually moved people off of that, but didn't dissuade them. What they did is they gave them something else to, to be helpful. Um, so they, they launched this immediate cleanup effort. So there was a lot of trash removal, uh, breaking, removal of vines, this kind of stuff. So um, that, that was good. So that was going on at the same time that people began donating money to the, to the Jewish Federation of Greater Philadelphia. Um, and very similar to the drone photograph that, that Robert was just showing, um, this is actually an aerial photograph. A land survey company in New Jersey contributed their, their services, and they, 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 did a, they did a mapping uh, project of the whole site right away. And through this, we were able to kind of quantify where, better than you could on the ground, right, where the worst levels of damage. We were able to get kind of a more of a macro view. And they went and, and basically we were able to show uh, everything that was that was downed, um, 
And also, if it's, if it, and here's, the, here's the, the way this occurred was there was a hole in the fence. There's a, there's a rec center that borders it on, on, the, on the side. They came in right where you see this, see where the red area is? There's a yellow area above it. They came in kind of right where that yellow area is. They worked their way up this side and then back down again. So you can see that's where the damage was. It's farther away from the road. It's in kind of a depressed area, so they did it without being seen. Um, so this was, this was the most, and, and they, were, they found just in that red area 134 disturbed head zones visible from, from the air. But then there were also high levels of dis disturbance here. All in all, over 500 stones were able to be shown to be down from the air. Okay, so that's showing a problem that's not just one incident of vandalism, but more of an ongoing nature over, over time. A lot of these stones we saw didn't just go down, they've been, they've been down quite, quite a while. What you're looking at here, though, is an, like said, an aerial photograph taken by a drone and then added to, to a CAD system. And this is, the, uh, this is what they're able to do. Um, and I think it's very neat. Yeah. They're very so, interesting what they can do. Yeah. But, so it showed us the magnitude. It showed us where, at least, if we're going to address this, areas to address first. So it gave us the beginning to be able to start prioritizing. Now, the, um, before anything could move forward on the work, there was a three-member rabbi panel that needed to approve whatever was going to go on. Um, I, had, I had called the, the, the uh, cemetery uh, right after it happened, and I, and I said, Look, you know, this is who we are. We're the National Park Service, and we have a monument program. If there's anything we can do to help, let, let us know. So they said, yeah, that would be great. Um, but they had been getting approached a lot, so I didn't know how they were going to receive a, a, a cold call. But anyway, I, I went out there, we had, we had a meeting, talked about, about it, and then um, I invited um, Joe jo, jo Farinini, who's a cemetery conservator from New York, to come down. And uh, he came in and we did a sample lift. We wanted to be able to photograph and basically demonstrate to the rabbis what the nature of the work was going to be. So we did a sample lift and then took video and, and, and photographed it so that they would have enough to go on to move forward. Um, and we began just this past March 27th, going up to April 7th, uh, a two-week pilot program uh, to try to, to work, you know, to try, try to see what, what we could do to help address the, the, the vandalism. And so the three entities involved were uh, a company, Gravestone Matters, which is Joe's company in Hoosick Falls. Joe and I are both on the board of the Association for Gravestone Studies. And so we, with our annual meetings, we do a lot of cemetery preservation workshops, really one-day workshops, not to train professionals, but rather to show beginners what, what the realm is and to show them what they can do, do safely as opposed to un unsafely. So uh, we, it was Joe, we worked with DM Sabi and company, they're masonry contractors out of Conchahawken. So these are, these are guys that have a nice, nice lifting equipment, you know, so, um, so we, they, they were hired as well. Joe's run, Joe was running the project, so he was the, he was the direction, the technical direction, and then I, I worked on it on behalf of the Park Service as well. Um, so we, we targeted this area first you know, the, and, and began working kind of from the top, working, working down to try to address these, these, these areas. And um, this is, this is the, the equipment that we had. It's, it's a small uh, crane, actually it was made for use within warehouses, it, but it's fairly narrow. It's five feet wide, about eight feet long. So in looking at the aerial views and looking on site, we could see which rows we could actually get this thing down and then how much lift, how much we could lift on either side. Now, there are things you can reach with that crane that you can't actually lift with it because of the weight involved. So but we were able to usually pick up two rows on either side of the row. And so we kind of plotted it. We'd come down this row. And then if there were things toppled, we would pick those, fix those, and then continue on down the row. So that's, that, that was the sort of general, general attack plan that we used with it. Um, but here's the nature of some of the, the damage. These huge granite monuments. Uh, there's, there's two granite, two, two marble ones right next to it. There's a lot of gray marble that, that, that were take, taken down on the left. And these are ones, this is on the first day uh, we, we had set, set these, these monuments. And in, in doing so, we looked and we said, okay, the problem here really isn't just the vandalism, it's monuments that have been down for a long time, and more importantly, it's monuments that are about to go. So those are the ones you really have to worry about, because in a sense, a fallen monument is pretty stable. 
but the ones that are going to kill somebody are the ones that are still standing but are leaning. And this is a cemetery that has had very sporadic uh, maintenance over the years. Uh, so our race resetting plan was the newly toppled monuments, the earlier fallen monuments, and then ones that were heavily leaning or unstable. And some of these, most of these probably were not, would not have been picked up in that aerial survey because they would appear to be, be, be standing. Um, so that's how, in fact, this one had been down, the one on the left had been down for so long, you could see written in the dirt what was written on the stone. So that's, that's the level of that damage. Um, so this is kind of pointing up poor cemetery management, which caused some other issues. So what we were doing is sort of taking the monuments that were down, cleaning them off, so chipping off the, uh, whatever material was used to, to shim them, either pointing or, or caulking material, mostly mostly uh, setting compound used on the granite stones and mortar on the, on the marble stones. So we would, we would, we would prep those and, and get them ready, clean them. And then here's one of the, uh, the granite monuments, making sure that, you know, the key thing is really making sure your base is, is level. Too many people set monuments on bases that are not, not level. So leveling the base, cleaning, the, cleaning it all off, putting uh, this bead of, of, of compound four lead shims at the corners because when you set the monument you don't want it to you want it to squish a lot of it out but not all of it you know so you want to have it to be able to be sitting on something so it's sitting on these lead shims and this is the way they they, they were done originally too and then being very careful setting them because you can't move this around you have to hit that right the first time it's got to land properly because you want it to to make a make a good a good seal so you can't be like jockeying it around and you can see, as uh, Robert was saying earlier, this, this double strap lift. This is a much more se secure lift than I've seen a lot of people use one strap and you've got this, you know, thousand pound stone swinging around. So, I mean, keep in mind with all of this stuff, uh, pres self-preservation is job one, you know. Um, we were finding a way, a lot of these had been set. There were these concrete ledges underneath that they had poured at some point. Um, so we were digging a lot of this stuff up and then resetting it in a, in a gravel mix, gravel, gravel fill. And in those, in those concrete, we were finding a lot of parts of the cemetery, like the railings that were used in family lots with the turnbuckles that was used to stiffen concrete. So you figure that was originally what it looked like in the 20s, probably in the 50s, 60s, they were harvesting this stuff. These had all been cradle graves. So you had the side rails, they had been harvested to ease maintenance of the site. We found those things in, in the concrete as well. So, you know, this, the site will tell you it's a lot about its history. So here was a particular, and we found monuments that were completely underground, like the one that I'm showing. These, both of these have been completely underground. Um, obelisk, large marble obelisk was pushed over in, in four spots, four, four breaks, and so that, that was re-erected. Re um, and, and you know you're picking up shards. Sometimes you're not finding pieces. Some of it's pulverized, especially with the marble monuments. But any piece that was big enough that we could find, um, we would we would re reattach, we would epoxy it back together, and then you can go back in and then and then fill that to sort of fill in those those open areas. And then you basically point point those as if it was a as if it was a mortar joint. Two of these grant these marble ones. And things like this, you, know, you find these little tiny shards, and we, we thought one of the things, most important thing about addressing this quickly is all of those little shards that you're finding in the grass are going to be gone soon. So if you're going to be able to reconstruct this corner like we did, this we did even before we had permission to do a project because we knew they would be lost. Um, all of the ones with orange flags are ones that, that, that we had re reset during that first two-week period. Here's, you can see, look, look at the number of them down there. They had been either pushed over or they were very unstable. And this particular one that, that we had, these, these two really nice uh, pink granite ones um, that had gone down, we, there was a, a, actually on a Wednesday, I guess it was the first week, end of a day, this guy came and he, well, I'll show you that. But anyway, this is just sort of before and after. This is the same section before and then at, at the end of, of this, this two-week period. Um, we had 10 National Guard guys who volunteered. So, okay, this was an opportunity to start doing the kind of grounds maintenance that we really needed because, you know, it's one thing, but the, the real key there, the real key here was 
The fact that these are going to become more stable once you've got earth to lock them in into place better. Um, they've never really dealt with, 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 with the way the site has subsided over time. Um, so that's what we're really advocating that, to really look at this holistically, look at it as a cemetery landscape to be preserved and not just as a collection of stones. Um, some of the other kind of human interest stories, after the vandalism, there's a little girl in Florida that painted these stones for St. Louis, for Rochester, New York, and for Philadelphia, and she sent them to, to, all, to the Jewish Federation these different cities and asked that as we treated things, that the stone as a remembrance would, would be placed, and they were all either hearts or, or ladybugs. So this big box arrived, and, and so we were doing that. And there was somebody from the Jewish Federation out there all the time. Um, this guy came, and toward the end of the day one day, um, he had been there, he'd seen, this was, he's, t- he's touching his sister's stone, right? She died in 1950 at the age of 18. He was, he was eight years old when his sister died. And he told us, because she had a kidney infection, you know, the kind of thing they could have solved now, but they, they couldn't then. And he was just so taken by the fact that, you know, he had seen it down and all of a sudden it was back up again. Um, so I, I took his picture and sent, sent it to him. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's it. And, um, and anyway, so at, the, at this point, after, two, after the first two weeks, we've reset 175 monuments. Um, we're now halfway through our second two-week phase. We're up to about 250 now. Uh, and you know, what's been really good is the Jewish Federation, rather, they began this as thinking about response to vandalism. Now they're really looking at a much bigger commitment into long-term cemetery preservation, not only for this cemetery, but for all the Jewish cemeteries in, in Philadelphia. There's been discussion about a friends group creation and all this. So you know, this is the kind of thing that you know, begins to galvanize people. And as you all know from your efforts, you know, it helps to move people forward uh, in terms of trying, trying to really a, a, attack cemetery preservation in, in a thoughtful, care, careful way. So anyway, thank you for letting me play through. Play through but, uh, mm-hmm. but I thought it, it would fit really well with sort of looking at cemetery preservation issues in a, in a, in a more global, global way. Thank you.